You're listening to WQPH 89.3 FM, Shirley Fitchberg, Queen of Perpetual Help, and welcome to another broadcast of WQPH's Local Matters. Now, this week is a special broadcast, and all this month we are celebrating the ninth anniversary of WQPH. And with that, we are recalling some of our favorite memories from WQPH, our future plans, and much more, featuring our own WQPH's Marianne Harold, Francine, and myself. Because we are a Prius for Life uh, apostolate that received, I believe, the first license from the FCC uh, to have a radio station. And our mission is prayer, obviously, and for life from the womb to the tomb. Francine's very familiar with that, right, Francine? Yes. And so it's very important to us that we share some of the events that we've had throughout the years, Jeannie. And one of the most critical ones was the visit we had of Father Stephen Imbarato, a feisty, on-fire priest for life. And he came and visited us, and Francine and her husband got to really know him well because they drove him from event to event. Talk about that, Francine. Yes, Father Imbarato, he was a late vocation. He tells his story how when he was young, he had a girlfriend and she got pregnant. And he said to her, well, go have an abortion. And she came back later and said, well, there were two, two boys. And so when he had a conversion of heart, he realized, oh my goodness, I killed my children. So he went to her and apologized for being so heartless and callous and Uh, made reparation and um, confessed, and still this was a heavy cross. Um, He, in in turn, adopted a little boy, raised the boy. The boy had some problems. I don't know whether he came from a mom that was uh, addicted to drugs or whatever, but anyway, he had some developmental problems. But, you know, he grew up, he got married. I think he, he had children of his own. So uh, Mr. Imbarato at the time became a grandfather, but then tragically, and I bl- believe they had a restaurant together. Um, Father Imbarato, uh, his son was, had a family, left this restaurant to his son and went in to become a priest. Well, the son ended up committing suicide, tragically. And so this is, you know, a heartache that he was carrying. And he goes and tells the story about how his first girlfriend was his Eve that he didn't stick up for, just like Adam didn't stick up for Eve when it came to the serpent and the temptation and the girl coming to him and saying, well, I'm pregnant. And he's like, well, go have an abortion instead of saying, well, hey, let's, you know, we're going to have kids. Let's talk about this. He felt like he deserted her similarly to, uh, he compares that to Adam and Eve's story when he talks to people. So um, he's the first man who has spoken up as far as silent no more. He belongs to the, that same campaign as Janet Morana. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. But anyway, silent no more. She championed that group. The women tell their stories. Well, he had a story to tell, and he was the first man to do that. Now he's part of this group. Well, I know of him and another man. They take the red rose, and they go into the abortion clinics, and they meet the women, and they approach them and talk to them and try to see if they can help them in some way other than uh, have an abortion that maybe we can help you in another way so you can have your child and uh, the red rose is a gentle way of approaching these women and he's been time and time again locked up in jail but he keeps going back and so he's a wonderful inspiration not only his own personal story but what he has done so when he came to visit us we were just thrilled to have him and this is just one of the many things that we were able to do. And an unbelievable witness that he gave, uh, Francine, you very accurately described it. Uh, and there might be someone now listening that wonders what they're going to do when they find themselves in a predicament like this. And there is hope. And I think that Father's visit, talk about some of the things that, what was the most impressive thing he did, Francine, when he came here? Well, he had no problem going with the Eucharist in front of Planned Parenthood. He uh, had the monstrance 
he stopped and came to the Planned Parenthood in Boston, where I pray with other many uh, prayer warriors there. And uh, priests will come and they'll have the Eucharist. But he was the first one that I witnessed that brought the monstrance. I mean, you know, it was just huge. And also in the Worcester area, he brought the monstrance there as well. And they had a big glass door. And we had a big picture of the divine mercy image of Jesus. On each side is an angel carrying, holding an aborted child. And it happens to be an image that was blessed by Pope John Paul II at the Vatican. It was brought there. He blessed this image. And while we were there processing, in the beginning of the procession, Father Imbarato had the monstrance knelt down in front of the abortion clinic. And visually, we could see the reflection of the divine mercy image and the monstrance in this abortion clinic. And lo and behold, it closed down. About a year and a half later, Francine, that's right, it closed down, and that's due to the hard work of many of the people in the Fitchburg area that were very, very staunch in going there every time they could on the weekends to pray for those women that were forced to discern, to take that decision to end the life of the unborn child. So one of the most remarkable things was we did a Eucharistic procession. Remember, Francine, uh, Father Dolan from St. Bernard at St. Camilla's Church allowed us to take the monstrance in the Blessed Sacrament. And we processed all the way down Mechanic Street into Main Street, which is the thoroughfare, the main thoroughfare of Fitchburg Center. And there were about 100 people processing, uh, including Deacon uh, Bob Connor, I believe, among others, Laura Casey. And the most important thing was he, he was streaming this on Facebook. Do you remember how many people were watching I do. Uh, I don't remember the number, but I know it was huge. 550,000 people were watching him come down Main Street, come down Mechanic Street, and then stop there where the Planned Parenthood was, right near the police station we were, if you remember. And then one woman, Laura, actually got a picture of how we were standing across from it with the image of our um, Lord of Divine Mercy, and her picture showed it inside the window across the street. How that ever happened, no one knows. That's a miraculous picture that Laura got and other people got it as well. So about a year and a half later, we found out that they uh, went out of business. Jeannie, what do you think about that, Jeannie? It must have taken something big for that to happen and it seemed like that was what it was. It was that Eucharistic procession and all those prayers that preceded it and all the sacrifice of the people that are so pro-life uh, in the Fitchburg area that relentlessly was there on Saturdays whenever the abortions were happening. And so a great stigma was removed, you know, and it's a college town there too, don't forget, right? We're just so proud of those people. And our friend, Dr. Mark Rollo, uh, that's doing the live program every week on 11 o'clock a.m. and 11 p.m. on Sunday, he was there. And he came back and we went to the Madonna Holy Rosary. We had a collation. Uh, and we had uh, the uh, musicians for life there playing their pro-life music. I wish we could play one of their songs during this local Mattis program, Jeannie. What do you think? Sure.
Elena Rodriguez with EWTN. You're listening to WQPH 89.3 FM, Shirley Fitchburg. Our local Mattis program that we're recording right now with Francine, who, if it weren't for her and her husband taking a father in Barado everywhere, how many events did we have, Francine? We were in the Worcester area. We went to um, Boston. We went to the Little Sisters of the Poor in their chapel, and there was a mass said there as well. And um, if you remember, this is when they were having that court case. We thought it would be a great idea to go there. And and also, we did have a meal, and he gave his talk about Eve and his heartache about his sons, his three sons. So he was very um, inspirational, very uh, dynamic. We were so fortunate to have him at the time. And he said, we all need to do something. We all need to get out there and process or, or whatever it is in our stage of life. Do something for these kids that are, are dying, that are being martyrs in our life, lifetime. And uh, now he's part of the program um, where it's stand out for life and basically they just asked stay on your porch have a sign i'm for pro-life sit there for an hour just do it for an hour um and it's basically just to get the word out when we did these processions and when we're all together like minds i mean you could just feel god's grace and we were just enveloped in all this positive energy because the situation is so sad but you know when you do an event like this or or when you work with people of like minds for this great cause of ours, you just, you feel the energy. All right. You feel the spirit, the Holy Spirit coming down. I know a lot of people are very powerful when they pray to the Holy Spirit and call him down. And so we know that Holy Spirit started this radio station a long time ago. Uh, when we first started nine years ago, it truly was the Holy Spirit because we didn't have the money for the equipment. We had no idea how to build a radio station. If it weren't for Father Richard Trainer and some dedicated local people like Rosemary Reynolds that in Kathleen Dagnold, uh, who helped launch this radio station and prayed for it, and all the people that prayed for it. This station is in Chris Telosco, um, our head of Massachusetts Prayers for Life, who applied for this license. It's a miracle. And then I worked with you, Jeannie, remember? 
when yeah. we were on Joe out. So talk about that. Did you ever think we would get a radio station? Well, I knew you were determined to have one, so I knew we were going to have one somehow. <laughs> it was like I know your determined spirit, so I knew it was going to happen one way or another, and it was a great thing when you accomplished that, and with a lot of people's support. Oh, immense support from people. Uh, when we were on WROL, uh, Jeannie was the producer of our program, and we used to air the program with Connie Murphy. But we can never stop thanking for his support and his bride, Kathleen, who was our um, moderator there. We had some wonderful memories, uh, Jeannie. And I think so many people are going to be getting a letter from us this week or next week asking us to continue supporting our radio apostolate. And the dream of getting a second one is still in, in my heart. But whether it's in God's heart is another situation. We don't do anything on our own, Francine. You know that, right? No, no, there's a lot of prayer. We have an adoration team that prays. We have many um, prayer warriors that are all about life. And, you know, from all these different towns, it's so nice when we have an event, we gather together to pray. It's just that rosary. I mean, that's, you know, the rosary is never lost. I mean, we always have the rosary with us. That's an, an uh, integral part in everything we do and we're processing we're saying that rose we were saying those chaplets of divine mercy so we feel god's grace it's just he wants you to keep going and do more for these poor little um little saints these little martyrs that are being butchered yes so together together and so if you have an interest in in joining us in your listening to this program i do hope you consider what you can do we have a program of doing 50 rosaries for life with our rosary quilts that we have over 20 states that did develop a rosary quilt and we have quilts that still can go out and visit churches and encourage people that can't be mobile on the street to pray which is the most powerful thing right francine yes yes so, because every everybody has um a part to play hmm. And the other thing now we're launching too is masses for life. We, we had a mass line many years ago uh, where we asked a person if they would have one mass every month for our ladies pro-life intentions. So that we're trying to gear that up again, because right now our country is in a very, I don't have to say that Jeannie, what's your assessment of where we are? Well, it's country? a very delicate place right now. Mm hmm most and it's not just these abortion clinics. I mean, look at look at what has happened to our elderly, you know, being just um, left to die in these nursing homes, insurance companies giving people letters. We can't give, give you medication to help you with your cancer or your illness, but we can give you a, a, a pill, a suicide pill. I mean, it's just both ends and the prayer is just you can't give enough. All right. So Dr. Rolo, Jeannie, is talking about that. Is it this week or next week? He um, will be talking about euthanasia, and he has a future broadcast with a Dr. Conrad, which he'll be talking about physician-assisted suicide and the process that it takes in different countries and within the states that has been legalized and the consequences for the legalization of it and the effects that it's had on society in general. Right. You know, we prayed nine years, Jeannie, to get a pro-life show. Everyone we asked <laughs> all said no. And then along comes Dr. Rollo. He goes on Tim's show, right? Yes. And then I get the brainstorm. He calls me one day. I said, Dr. Rollo, would you like to do a program for six weeks? No answer, right? So time goes by and I say, oh, he doesn't want to do a program. I thought if I said six weeks, he wouldn't feel overly committed. He sends me an email. I'm sorry to say this publicly, Dr. Rollo, but you're so cute. And I love you so much. And your wife is a great treasure, a great duo. I said, Dr. Rollo, do you want to do, he goes, I want my own, I want my own program. So Jeannie, I'm making that happen. Right? Yeah, we're working with him. He has a lot of knowledge to give to people. He really knows what he's talking about, and he knows it firsthand, being a doctor and 
working with Mass Citizens for Life. He's a board member on that team, and he has a lot of good guests that are coming on. Right. So I'm hoping he's going to write a book, and I'm hoping he's going to go out and when we can have pre breakfasts or luncheons, uh, that we can take him out and, and, and meet the flesh of the people who, who are so pro-life and they need his encouragement and all the information. I can't believe how much information he's going to give out on your programs with him, Jeannie. Yes, and as far as that goes, he wants you to take action. He is always, he seems to be very determined to not only are you listening to his show, but you might be part of the difference that you make in the world. Amen. Amen. Well, Jeannie, how are we doing for time? Do we have time for another song from the Musicians for Life? What do you think? Okay, we have time. Mass, and I'm thanking all of you for listening to WQPH 89.3 FM. Okay, can we all say a prayer together and pray that we persevere in this dark time for our country, that by the grace of God, somehow we are rescued and we renew our unity as a nation. Jeannie, you lead the prayer if you wouldn't mind. Go ahead. We pray over WQPH and we pray over our society and this country that we will be led into the right path and that we will go forward and be able to beat this illness. And I pray that WQPH will be able to be a part of the change or be a part of the improvement of society in years to come. How beautiful. Yeah, Mary. Full of grace. Blessed are thou among, uh, thou among women, and blessed, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Mother of God pray, pray for us sinners, now, at the hour. now and at the hour of our death. Amen. amen. Well, God bless you, Francine. God bless, God bless you, you Marianne.
I am surrounded by two jewels, and not to mention our listeners that have been listening to us. God bless you too, dear listener. So we want to let you know how much we appreciate all your support you've given us through the years. We have an Eternal Life Radio Guild uh, that Father Richard said we should try to have 80 members, but unfortunately we don't. And what does the Guild do? The Eternal Life Radio Guild contributes monthly or quarterly what they can afford to give. Our smallest one is $5 a month, $10 a month. We have people who have given us $30 a month that don't listen in even the radio area because they know the value of evangelizing and telling the truth as it really is, as our faith taught us. Our Mother Angelica would say, keep us between your electric and your gas bill. We need to make the same request. I know some of you support EWTN, and that's very good. But don't forget, we have a cell tower that we have to pay every month. The bill is now going from $1,100 a month, $1,400 a month. And that's a lot of $5 contributions. Maybe you've been blessed and you sold a piece of property and you want to tithe something for God. What more could you give God but Catholic Radio in our area? We serve three prisons. We have a lot of people listening uh, that are older. They're homebound. uh, They're in nursing homes. We really need to reach out to more people. So if you can contribute, there's two ways. One is to go on our website and hit the PayPal button, and you can donate. If you'd like to be a member of the Guild, you can let us know. You can call us at our station, 978-343-0893. Or you can write to us at Post Office Box 589, Medford, Mass., And by the grace of God, we were just able to send out a big mailing of 1,800 letters, which is not a lot, to our supporters, but we need to hear from you. I know even if you can say a prayer, that's going to help us. But a donation is very much appreciated right now. So you can send that donation if you're going to mail it to WQPH Radio, Post Office Box 589, Medford, Mass., 02155. And if you'd like to be on our news list, and get the weekly subscriber on our website, just go on www.wqphradio.org. You can hit the Listen Live button. If you listen from Ashburnham, which is not in the signal, or Gardner, you can hear the radio. I listen here in Medford on the TuneIn app, or I go on the website and hit Listen Live. There's two ways to listen, so you're never without WQPH. And don't forget our website is wqphradio.org. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Francine. Thank you. God bless. Thank you for listening to another edition of WQPH's Local Matters. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast and hope you have a blessed week.